Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be trying on these new Matte Dazzle Shadow Extreme Shadows. So I did go by Nordstrom and I picked up six of the shades in the line. Now I didn't pick up all of them because some of them I felt like they were way too light for me. So I went ahead and picked up the shades that I thought that I would like the most. So I do have some of the Matte Dazzle Shadows in my collection. This is actually one of them. It's called Get Physical. Now the shadows that I'm going to be trying today are supposed to be the Dazzle Shadow Extreme. So they're going to be more intense than the originals. So I will show you the original and what the original looks like. Again, this is called Get Physical, but that is it right there. It is still a beautiful shadow. It goes on very pigmented, but it's not super intense and it has like glitter specks in it. So they look very dazzling on the eyes. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna place each shadow on my eyelid so you guys will see how these shadows perform. Now I will say that I have not tried these shadows just yet, so I'm trying them for the first time with you guys. I do wanna use a MAC 242 brush. This is the brush that I have usually used with the original Dazzle shadows. So we're gonna go ahead and use this brush again. I am gonna start off with the darkest shade because the lighter shade that I put on, that's what I'm actually gonna wear today. So I went ahead and put on the Revolution Pro Eye Elements Central Eye Primer. And I wanted to put the shadows on with the eye primer because I rarely ever put shadows without an eye primer. I wanted to demonstrate this as if I was going to actually wear the shadow. So let's go ahead and start off with the first one. So they do come in the typical MAC packaging there's a little silver rim inside and then there's the shadow this one is called Illuminati and I'm just going to place it all over my lid so you guys can see and the reason I got this shade was not because I'm gonna wear it all over my lid like this it's because I'm going to actually use this like with those other shades that I got just to intensify like the corner of my eyelid when I wear those shades. I just think it'd be beautiful to add some depth to those shades with this black shade. Okay, so let me try to blend that. I wanna see how it blends. It blends really well. You know, I'm getting all the edges and I'm blending it pretty well. And I blended it as well as I could. I am getting a little bit of fallout here, but that right there is Illuminati. I think it is a beautiful shade because I'm gonna show you a swatch. That is what it looks like swatched. Um, now, I really feel like it's not an intense black. It is a very nice charcoal black, which I think is really pretty. And I think if you put the right crease color in and you add this, that it's gonna blend out really well with other shadows. So yeah, I try to blend it out as much as I can, but for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna be too specific with the shadows. I just wanna see how they come off on the eyelid. So I am gonna clean off this brush and I'm gonna use the other side to go into the next shade. Okay, I went ahead and put some powder on there so it just doesn't get everywhere. Okay, I just looked and I did purchase seven. I thought I only purchased six, but I purchased seven. So this next one is called Incinerated. This is the shade here. And I'm just using the other side of that MAC 242. It's kind of like a plum shade and it's got like some pink iridescence in it. Really pretty. I changed my brush out because I wanted to see if another brush would actually spread the product better and this one is doing a lot better than the MAC 242 so we're just going to kind of stick with something like this but look how beautiful that is just really pretty i'm going to take my blending brush really pretty yeah and i'm getting the fallout right there as you guys can see so the next shade is joy to glitz and it's this really beautiful green shade so we're going to go ahead and place this on the lid. Okay, I had to change brushes because that brush wasn't picking up this shade really well. So I went back to the MAC 242.
That is gorgeous. Oh, this probably has to be one of my favorite shades so far. Isn't that pretty? That is so pretty. That's gonna be like beautiful for spring and summer. It's just gorgeous. I'm gonna try to put some on with my finger just cause I wanna see if it intensifies it. Oh my gosh, and it does. Look at that. That is so pretty. Okay, I love that. So I'm gonna try this next one with a brush and then I'm gonna use my finger so I can intensify it just like I did this one. So this next one is called Cella Butante. I'm going to wipe off my brush and I'm going to stick with the MAC 242. Okay, this shade is just as gorgeous as the green one. So I'm going to use my finger to intensify it a little bit more. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. When you use your finger, guys, you're gonna get so much color payoff. Look how gorgeous that shade is. Oh my gosh, I love both of these. They're just so pretty. So I'm gonna take this off and then we'll come back with the other two. Okay guys, so the next shade I'm gonna go into is Couture Copper, really beautiful copper shade. So I didn't go in with any eye primer because I just kind of want to see how these perform with no eye primer because they have a weird consistency. It's kind of like, kind of like creamy, kind of creamy pasty, if that makes sense. Not pasty in a bad way. This has like that creaminess, that thick creaminess to it. So I'm just going to put this on my lid. Okay, so using my finger, look how much it intensified that copper color. And guys, this is without the eye primer. Now, I don't know how long these would last without an eye primer, but I will test that part of it out for you guys. But with or without the eye primer, I think it comes off really nicely on the eye and also adding the product with your finger allows for a more intensified look. So I love, love this copper color. That's gonna be gorgeous for summer as well. So for the next shade I'm gonna use is Yes to Sequins. This is actually the lightest shade that I got. The last shade I got is what I'm gonna to use to wear for the rest of the day. But this is the Yes to Sequins and I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my eyelid without any primer because with or without primer it's coming off the same. This is a very, very light shade. I'm talking super light. Let me use my finger. Okay, this one has to be my least favorite because there's just really nothing to it, to be honest. All right, guys, the last shade is Obiet de Art. I think I'm saying that right, I'm not sure. This one is more of like a gold shade, so I'm using this on both eyes today. So before I go into that one, I am gonna add a transition shade. I'm gonna go in with the matte Give Me Sun, and I'm just going to take my brush and put this in the crease just to give a really nice transition shade. I'm using that MAC 242. Just place that all over the lid. This brush is not picking this one up as well as it did with the other shadows. Let me try a different brush. That's not doing it either. So I'm going to try my finger. And of course, the finger works. Problem is I have nails so I can't get right in the corner here. These are like foiled shadows. They have like a little bit of chunkiness to them. The consistency is just different. And they do build up with your finger. Okay, that one I really had to build up. So I'm taking the brush and I'm trying to get into the corner there. Do you see how it kind of builds up right here? Like it looks a little bit chunky. 
Okay guys, let's go over my thoughts of these shadows. I will tell you that there were some shadows that I really did not care for. I will tell you which ones those are. The Obeit de Art, the Yes to Sequins, and the Illuminati. So these were the hardest to work with. This one felt like it came off a little bit chunkier than the others. The Yes to Sequins, you really couldn't even tell that I had it on my eyelid. And then the Illuminati is something that I'm probably not going to use after all. I thought it would be good on the corners to actually add depth to each shadow, but I'm not really feeling this one. Now the incinerated shadow was a beautiful like maroon tone shadow, kind of like purplish plumish with like a little bit of pink in it. And I really did like this. This one is a little chunky as well. Not as chunky as the Obeit de Art, but this one does have some chunkiness to it. I don't know what it is with these shadows. I don't know if you're supposed to use them without a primer or with a primer. I tried both. They went on pretty much the same with or without. So I'm not really sure about the application of these shadows. I thought that maybe using that 242 brush or another synthetic brush that it would actually pick up the product and place it on my eye. But unfortunately, these are shadows that you have to use with your finger to get that intensity. And um, if you're not one to use your finger, if you have nails like I do, it's very difficult to actually place that product on the eyelid. So the three shadows that I really did love from this line was the Celebutante. It was the fuchsia looking shadow. The other one was the Couture Copper. And then the last one, which was my all-time favorite, was the Joy de Glitz. This one has got to be like the most beautiful shadow on the eyelid, especially for dark brown eyes. I just thought it looked so gorgeous on the eye. So I did look the information up about the shadows on the Nordstrom website, and it says it is a pressed powder eyeshadow with a cream-like texture that offers one swipe saturation and 12 hours of staying power. It says it glides across lids, leaving behind a wet-like metallic finish that looks like melted metal. The formula contains lustrous pearlescent pigments for color that is certified and brilliant and won't fade or crease. It says apply to lids using an eyeshadow brush. With my finger, I felt like I got a lot more color payoff and the shadows just really came out a little bit bolder with my finger than it did with a brush. So I'm not really too happy about the way the shadows turned out. Uh, other than the three colors that I really liked. I really thought that these were gonna be like straight up, intense, you know, easy to apply shadows and they weren't that. So anyway, I am gonna keep the three that I loved and I'm gonna take all the others back. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Dazzle Shadow Extreme Shadows by MAC. If you did, give it a thumbs up and also let me know down in the comments below whether you tried the shadows or not or how you actually applied the shadows and if you like the finish of the shadows on your eyelid. But anyway, thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate you. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.